we're going to use a real real world example to figure out a process to determine if a table of data or a set of data represents a linear function. And we're going to use the concept of speed. So this is the graph of someone who's walking at a constant speed and this table represents data points from this graph. And so if I can find this person's speed and show that it's constant, then I know it's linear because I know that if I have a graph I have this that's a distance in time and it's a straight line that means that person was walking at a constant speed so if I can show constant speed on this table then I can show this table is linear so the question becomes how do you calculate speed and I know in your brain the first thing that comes up is distance over time and so if I check the distances and I divide them by the times let's see what happens so 7 divided by 2 is 3.5 13 divided by 4 is 3.25 those two numbers aren't the same. So I have to think about what speed really is and how do I really calculate it. So my question to you is can you calculate speed from a single data point? And the answer is no because you need two data points because you have to figure out how far someone traveled in how much time. So speed is not just distance over time but speed is the change in distance over the change in the time. So if I go back to this table and I find the change in distance from this 27 to the 413, their distance increased by 6 when their time increased by 2. So that means they had a 6 meter difference in distance in a 2 second period of time. And if I find this distance here, it's a change of plus 10.5 and this change in time is a plus 3.5. So to verify that the speed speeds are constant between these two points and those two points and therefore verify it's linear, I need to check this ratio. Uh, 6 over 2 and I need to check it with this ratio of 10.5 over 3.5. If the person is walking at a constant speed then these two ratios are going to be equal and 6 over 2 is 3 and 10.5 divided by 3.5 is also 3. So I have verified that this person is indeed walking at a constant speed using this table. So I need to think about what I did here. I found the change in the distance and the change over the time and I made little ratios and I made that they're equal. Now not all situations are going to be for speed so I need to think of what speed is in a general sense. Speed is an example of something we call the, a rate of change. Rate of change is a generic term that applies to everything. The rate of change is defined as the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. And we don't like writing the word change. As you could tell, that, that handwriting got really bad there. Um, so instead of writing the word change, we use the Greek letter delta to represent change, and you might have seen that in your science class. And instead of saying dependent, we're going to say change in y over the change in x. All right. So this is the Greek letter delta, and it's used for change. Not quarters, nickels, or dimes, but, you know, change in something. Um, so the rate of change is defined as the change in y over the change in x. Now every set of data has a rate of change. Quadratics have a rate of change. Uh, everything has a rate of change. But what's special is the pattern in the rate of change. And for a linear set of data, um, and think back to the example of the constant speed, um, it tells you that in order to be linear, you need a constant rate of change. Okay, that's the key. To be linear, you must have a constant rate of change. So things that are linear, and I'm going to say this again, have a constant rate of change. Quadratic rates of change um, have a, a common second difference, and so it's a different pattern. Exponentials have a different pattern in their rate of change. Um, linears, though, constant rate 
of change. And this means the same thing. It's a general example of saying constant speed. So let's look at a couple tables and determine if these tables are linear or not by checking to see if they have a constant rate of change. The question is, is this table linear? And there are two ways to determine if, it, or there are actually more than two ways. There are a lot of ways to determine if the table is linear. One thing you can do, and I do not suggest this, is to make this table sequential. That means go back and figure out what the table would be if I had 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. So I could, if I wanted to, and if I had a lot of time, I could figure out what number goes there and what number would go there and what number would go there for it to be linear. But that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the concept that a table that is linear has a constant rate of change. And I'm going to figure out what the rate of change is by calculating the change in y over the change in x. Now you have to figure out the change in y over the change in x of the entire table, not just two data points. Okay, because I'm going to tell you something, this big secret about linear. Any two points are going to form a line. All right. So if I just check those two points, yes, they're going to make a line. And if I just check those two points, they're going to make a line. And if I check those two points, yeah, they're going to make a line. The question is, is if they're all on the same line. And so I'm going to use a technique that I like to call bug arms. Bug arms. And you'll see why I call it bug arms in a second. So my goal is to find the change in y over the change in x and then verify that it's constant. Because if it is constant, then that means this table or this table here is linear. And if it's not constant, it's not linear. All right. So I'm going to find the difference between 8 and 2. And the sign matters. The sign totally matters. If I'm going up or down, it makes a huge difference. Okay, so going from 8 to 2 is a drop in 6. So it's negative 6. And then going from 2 to negative 7 is a decrease or a drop in 9. So these are my change in y's, right? And over here, I'm going to have my changes in x. So from 0 to 2 is a plus 2, and from 2 to 5 is a plus 3. So now that I have all my changes in y's and my changes in x's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the ratios. So the question now becomes, is negative 6 over 2 equal to negative 9 over 3? If they are equal, then this table does represent a linear function. And negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. And negative 9 over 3 is negative 3. So that means that, yes, this is indeed linear. Okay, now the reason why I call this bug arms is because you can imagine little antenna coming out and then little legs coming out. And it's like this angry bug has his hands on his hips. So that's why I call this bug arms. We've come to the first check for understanding, just to see if you understand what's been going on so far in the lesson. So I want you to answer this question for these two tables. Does this table show a linear relationship? And then explain. So here's your first table. Uh, contains the points 3, 6, 8, negative 2, 12, negative 10. The second table contains the point 0, 5, 3, 6, and negative 12, 1.